part one of california history two pieces this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by david wales california history two pieces by various part one types of indian culture in california 1904 by alfred lewis Krober. part one only one attempt to give a systematic account of the indians of california has been made more than twenty-five years ago stephen powers wrote his famous tribes of california which with all its defects still stands unrivalled in comprehensiveness and usefulness the one work on california which every anthropologist must cite the last few years have seen more extended research of the indians of the state the ethnological and archaeological survey of california conducted by the department of anthropology of the university of california through the liberality of mrs phoebe a hurst is intended to secure and preserve for record as much information about the indians and to save for the people of the state as many of the remains and objects illustrative of the native life as possible from the time of the first settlement of california its indians have been described as both more primitive and more peaceful than the majority of the natives of north america on the whole this opinion is undoubtedly true the practical arts of life the social institutions and the ceremonies of the california indians are unusually simple and undeveloped there were no war for its own sake no confederacies of powerful tribes no communal stone pueblos no totems or potlatches the picturesqueness and dignity of other indians are lacking in general rudeness of culture the california indians are scarcely above the eskimo and whereas the lack of development of the eskimo on many sides of their nature is reasonably attributable in part to their difficult and limiting environment the indians of california inhabit a country naturally as favorable it would seem as might be if the degree of civilization attained by people depends in any large measure on their habitat as does not seem likely it might be concluded from the case of the california indians that natural advantages were an impediment rather than an incentive to progress throughout the greater part of the state the civilization of the indians is very much alike while the number of groups and of divisions corresponding to tribes and the number of languages is large and no two groups show exactly identical customs and beliefs the general type of culture is uniform the exceptions are southern california and the northwesternmost part of the state but the territory covered by these divergent cultures is comparatively small and more than two-thirds of the state including all the central part show a fundamental ethnical similarity whose distinguishing characteristics furthermore are not found outside of the state it is therefore possible to speak of typical california indians and to recognize a typical californian culture area a feature that should not be lost sight of in connection with the indians of california is the great stability of population this condition must always be given consideration in any attempt to explain the linguistic diversity existing in the state the extraneous races that have made their way far enough into the state have been completely assimilated to the condition of life of their neighbors the atabascan hoopa are almost identical in culture with the non-atabascan uruk the atabascan cato with the northernmost of the californian pomo as in other regions of america acculturation has proceeded at a more rapid rate than migration throughout the typical culture area of california the indians lived primarily on vegetable products they were of course also hunters especially of small game and wherever there was opportunity fishermen but it is probable that plant food formed as large a proportion of their subsistence as of any of the non-agricultural and even some of the agricultural tribes of the continent north of mexico the staple was everywhere acorns but an abundance of other plant products consisting more largely of seeds than of berries or roots were known and eaten 
the dwellings of these california indians were sometimes of a tolerable size but may be described as having been huts rather than houses structures of brush or of tule were common wood was also used but consisted of sticks pieces of bark and similar materials rarely or never of split or dressed planks whatever part of the structure had any weight and was raised above the ground was either leaned against supports or rested on forking upright logs the shape of the houses was conical or domed and either thatching or a layer of earth was usually depended upon to keep out the rain almost all the tribes had assembly houses generally known as sweat houses that were larger than the dwelling houses only in the regions where the use of the sweat house was confined to sweating and sleeping and to lesser ceremonies was it smaller than the house the arts were unusually primitive basketry alone had reached a considerable development pottery was unknown except perhaps for rude attempts by some of the tribes in contact with the shoshoneans rope and string were everywhere but woven textiles nowhere made within the state felling or large cutting implements other than wedges of antlers and these had a very limited use were not employed the art of carving was exceedingly rude such objects as tubular wooden pipes and small paddles for stirring semi-liquid vegetable food were made by perhaps the majority of tribes but even these objects were not found everywhere pipes of reeds and soup stirrers of looped sticks were the only ones used by certain tribes of the sierra nevada what carved native work there exists from california is notably deficient in ornament the scanty decorations are simple and crude of realistic representation either in two or in three dimensions there appears to be virtually none beyond the patterns on baskets and in these the conventional side in most cases far outweighs the realistic the interpretations of designs being pattern names and not symbolism picture writing is foreign to the mind of the california indian the social organization was both simple and loose there was no trace of a gentile organization tribes can scarcely be spoken of with correctness beyond the family the only bases of organization were the village and the language the villages were often not continuously inhabited the population being inclined to shift within confined limits they were connected into groups of little definiteness whose common bond was similarity of language and sometimes frequency or cordiality of intercourse but which were without political coherence in most cases these larger groups were without names the village communities almost always were named from localities generally the systematic classification of the divisions of any larger body of indians is difficult on account of the lack of organization in population and social life the village was the approximate equivalent of a localized clan but being the largest political unit it corresponded in a measure to a tribe in so simple a condition of society difference of rank naturally found but little scope the influence of chiefs was comparatively small and distinct classes as of a nobility or of slaves were unknown there was however little communistic tendency accompanying the simplicity of social organization for individual property rights were developed and what organization of society there was was largely on the basis of property the ceremonies of california are characterized as compared with those of the indians of the rest of america by a very slight development of the extreme ritualism that is so characteristic of the american indians and by an almost entire absence of symbolism of any kind fetishism is also unusual among the pomo and yuckets and perhaps other groups fetishes are used to some extent as has been observed by stephen powers but usually in connection with individual shamanistic efforts rather than with communal or tribal ceremonies the most important ceremonies of the maidu of the northern sierra nevada have been said by dixon to be an annual mourning ceremony and the observances of a secret society 
the tribal mourning ceremonial variously known as burning cry or dance of the dead seems to be found in some form among all the divisions of the main part of the state excepting the pomo and yuki as well as among all the tribes of southern california but in the northwesternmost region of the state only faint reminiscences of it occur something corresponding to a secret society is also found in the greater part of the state although in many very different forms to some of which the strict organization of a society can scarcely be said to belong it seems however that there is everywhere either some ceremony conducted by a special group of men or an initiation of children or young men the dance costumes consist primarily of feathers they are not complex and often without delicacy but sometimes striking mythological characters are at times represented the disguise of such characters consists of feathers and paint masks not being used restrictive beliefs in regard to all phases of life especially birth death names and sexual matters are very strongly developed in california and have led to a long series of prescribed usages and prohibitions which play as large a part in the life of the people as analogous restrictions do among the tribes of the north pacific coast and northern athabascans and the eskimo and decidedly more than among the tribes of the mississippi valley or those of the agricultural southwest generally speaking the characteristics of culture that have been enumerated pertain to all the indians between point conception and cape mendocino and between this stretch of coast and the sierra nevada extending from north to south from mount shasta to the tehachapi range in the northwestern part of the state is found another type of culture the territory of which is very much more limited this culture centers about the lower klamath river and extends to the south as far as lower eel river the indians showing this culture most conspicuously are the karak the uruk and the athabascan hoopa only these three tribes practice the so-called white deerskin dance the weshiks of humboldt bay the athabascan tribes of redwood creek and more southern streams the athabascan talawa of smith river on the coast to the north and the chimerical of trinity river to the southeast all show more or less the same culture considerable traces of the same type of civilization are also found among the shasta on the east and among the athabascans along the lower eel river in southernmost humboldt county but so many typical elements of the northwestern culture are lacking among these last two groups and they present so many resemblances on the one hand to the indians of oregon pitt river and the sacramento valley and on the other to the yuki and pomo tribes of mendocino county that they may more properly be included in the larger central group to the north the limits of the northwestern ethnical province seem to have been formed by the siskiyou range except along the coast where the type of culture perhaps undergoes a more gradual transition through the various athabascan tribes of southern oregon in some of their characteristics the indians of this northwestern region of california resemble the tribes on the pacific coast between the columbia river and alaska in some respects however they are typically californian and in still other ways they have reached considerable specialization the subsistence of the indians of northwestern california is less predominantly vegetable than in the remainder of the state salmon constitutes perhaps as great a staple as acorns and along the coast much dependence is placed upon seafood dugout canoes of a distinct and unvarying type are used in the region wherever the coast or the rivers permit navigation while boats hewn out from logs appear to be somewhat used in other parts of northern california yet they lack finish and through the larger part of the state the nearest approach to a canoe has always been the boat-shaped raft of tules the houses of the northwestern indians also are distinctly superior to those in other parts of the state though they are not large never exceeding twenty-five feet in greatest dimension 
both walls and roof are made of split and hewn planks the door is a circularly cut hole in the front and the roof is gabled neither thatching nor earth being used to keep out the rain the houses are built approximately square about a smaller central pit the sweat house in this region is smaller than the house it is rectangular and almost entirely below ground it is the habitual sleeping place of the men and while used for certain ceremonial purposes is of greater importance as a true sweat house it thus differs considerably from the much larger round or dome-shaped assembly houses of groups such as the pomo or the maidu in the central region throughout california heat in the sweat house is produced directly by a smoking fire and not by steam as is the custom over the larger part of north america the arts of the indians of this northwestern region are also more developed than those anywhere else in the state certain objects such as tubular pipes are made with nicety of finish acorn soup paddles are ornamented with geometrical carving that sometimes reaches a fair degree of elaborateness other objects that are made only in this region in the state are hollow cylindrical purses of elkhorn larger wooden boxes of the same shape and elkhorn spoons with carved handles in spite of the tolerable proficiency in carving of the indians of this region their ornamentation is confined almost exclusively to triangles and acute angles and any attempt at realistic representation whether of animals or of the human figure such as is so characteristic of the north pacific coast seems to be foreign to their minds the basketry of the northwestern tribes is exclusively twined in this respect the tribes of the extreme northeastern part of the state agree with them everywhere south coiled basketry not only occurs but predominates the dead are regularly buried in this region throughout the central area burning seems to be more usual although the practice varies society in northwestern california is organized only upon the basis of the family in the village the villages are more prominent and stable than among the central californians the village communities might be said to represent clans but as there is nothing resembling a totemic or gentile name and no requirement of exomony and as the numerous local legends refer not to the ancestors of the people of that place but to the place itself and moreover are known to the entire group or stock and not only to the inhabitants of one village it must be recognized that these village communities are quite different from clans such as are found among the haida or iroquois or pueblos or even the quaquitil or the blackfeet it is very probable that the same type of social organization prevailed along the coast northward for some distance and that the hientes of the Athabascans of oregon described by j o dorsey are nothing more or less than village communities there is in this region a reminiscence of the north pacific coast in the importance of wealth as a factor in society separate classes of nobles and common people do not exist in northwestern california but in almost all affairs of life it is the man of wealth who is the one of importance with a consistency that would seem strange to the southwestern or eastern indians of the united states but intelligible to the indians of the north pacific coast this prominence of wealth finds perhaps its greatest expression in ceremonials the acquisition and retention of wealth are the chief aim in life of the indians of this region and connected with this are a mercenary temper and lack of truthfulness shown also by the tribes of the pacific coast northward a limited number of slaves were formerly held but they invariably entered this condition of life through debt not through capture in war marriage is a definitely regulated system of outright purchase injuries or crimes are compounded by payments in case of war which seems to have been carried on only by individual villages or small groups of connected villages the conclusion of peace consisted of payment by each party for all persons killed and property destroyed on the other side 
consequently it was the victors whose payments to the inferior party were the greater and anything like the tribute that has been mentioned as paid by certain tribes to the hupa was an impossibility with the social organization of these groups in place of the disc-like perforated shell beads of central california dentalia form the chief medium of exchange in the northwestern region but there are other classes of articles that constitute wealth prominent among these are woodpecker scalps obsidian implements and unusually colored deer skins an important feature of difference from the tribes of the north pacific coast is the complete absence of the potlatch or any form of gratuitous or ceremonial distribution of wealth both the tribal mourning ceremony and the secret society or initiation rite are wanting among the northwestern tribe their most characteristic ceremonies are held only at certain localities the religious element in them is surprisingly slight consisting almost altogether of the ministrations of one man who has certain actions none of them very striking prescribed or forbidden to him his most important function is the recitation of a formula which is little else than the myth of the origin of the dance of that place in the dance itself almost any one may participate and all parts of the ceremony in which the priest is not directly concerned are not regarded with distinct reverence for the important men of the tribe the dance is above all else an opportunity for a display of their wealth which is worn and carried by the dancers formulas similar to those spoken for the dances exist for all ceremonies and for numerous purposes such as war love hunt and fishing they all bear the same general character being virtually a myth relating the origin of the ceremony or action in question these formulas are what is most sacred in the religious life of the indians of this region they may be compared in many respects to the karakias of the maori they show the great virtue attached by these tribes to words as compared with actions in matters of religion the same tendency is revealed in the almost utter lack of visible ritualism which is perhaps even more complete than among the central californians like the central tribes the northwestern indians show very little inclination towards mysticism or any form of symbolism even in the most sacred matters the ceremonial and the mythical number is five or ten in central california it is usually four shamanism rests upon the same general basis of thought as elsewhere in america but shows considerable specialization in some directions among at least one tribe the uruk of the lower klamath river there appears to be no definite conception of a guardian spirit or supernatural helper an idea universal throughout the continent nevertheless the actions gone through both in the acquisition of shamanistic power and in its practice appear to be the same as elsewhere the mythologies of the northwestern and especially of the central region of california are quite different from those found in other parts of north america and their special characteristics may be best brought out by a comparison the mythologies of all peoples contain an attempt to explain the world this is true of more than the almost ever-present creation myth among primitive people who have not come under the influence of one of the world religions most myths end with an account of the origin of something in nature or among men an animal or plant a particular rock a custom an implement the shape of an animal or the coloring of a bird so prevalent is this tendency that it has been thought by certain scholars that mythology was primarily an attempt at science the american indians like other men are constantly moved by this tendency but on the whole their accounts of the origin of the world are remarkably incomplete and incoherent their creation myths are undeveloped those of one of the highest groups the mexicans are noted for their fragmentariness and inconsistency it seems as if the impulse to give an explanation of phenomena by means of myth were never present in the minds of the indians 
but that it is overpowered by other impulses especially a ceremonial and a narrative one these tendencies give form to the stories the explanations due to philosophical tendency are incidents incorporated in the stories in some degree this holds true even of american creation myths often they contain far more myth than creation almost all the north american indians have an idea of the appearance of the earth after a great flood or from the primeval water usually this belief is connected with the idea of the successive diving of various animals to bring up earth from the bottom of the water for the formation of the world in most cases this episode is really the most important part of the myth and the side that most interests and impresses the indians this is shown by the frequency with which this to us insignificant incident is told in connection with the origin of the earth even more by the fact that the making of the earth in this way is often recounted as being a renewal its real origin being unaccounted for and in some cases by the degradation of the entire account of the flood the diving and the renewal of the world to an incident in the life of a tricky hero the same lack of feeling for a systematic philosophy is evident in the absence of any comprehensive idea of the act or process of creation in american indian myths primitive races like the africans australians and andamanes have developed these conception further while the polynesians and others have replaced it by the equivalent one of birth or growth these two ideas also run through the mythologies of the more civilized races of the old world but in america they are lacking without creation there are no creators in america while the readily reached abstract idea of a primary and supreme deity occasionally breaks through it is quickly forgotten and never really enters into a mythology so as to influence it deeply there are a number of cases of such rationalizing origin and creation myths for instance among the blackfeet they are a bald recital of disconnected creations without beginning or end without character or plot and in no real relation with the live body of the mythology they differ from it in spirit and are clearly superimposed upon it not only creators but gods are a conception that does not flourish among the american indians distinct deities have been evolved by the more developed nations of the old world conspicuous for their mythology such as india babylonia egypt greece and norway some of these deities create and some do not but they always have character character is an element in mythology wherever there is true polytheism even mythologies of less developed races such as the polynesians produce deities through the conception of characters the indian seems to have been unable to form characters as such and consequently is without real gods his substitutes for them in ritual as well as in myth are either animals or personages distinguished by identification with colors with directions with substances or with ceremonial ideas white shell woman animal species present character ready-made and ritualistic figures offer some approach to an equivalent but it is evident that the characters obtained in this way must be of a special sort limited in their applicability and very difficult to bring into intimate connection with creation the indian substitute for the deity is the culture hero the god creates by the introduction of character he can be differentiated and the interaction of distinct deities makes god myths the culture hero is a man he is always alone when he occurs in several personages in one mythology these are only repetitions of one another in north and south america he is the same now he is more heroic dignified even pathetic a benefactor and teacher now more inquisitive enterprising obscene and ridiculous 
it is a commonplace that his character varies between these qualities from episode to episode in the same mythology but he is always a man in spirit and he always stands alone in his world he makes the world or remakes it from existing earth brought him by an assistant animal he does not create it he changes individual men coexistent with him to animals he does not create the world's animals and plants he does not create man but finds and helps him he is the one and the only possible character of american mythology he is the indian himself in his nakedness End of part one part two of california history two pieces by various this librivox recording is in the public domain part two types of indian culture in california nineteen o four by alfred lewis crober part two all the above is stated of the indians in general and is therefore not without exceptions but even those specific cases that are exceptions usually rest on a wider basis that conforms with the conditions here described the elaborate pantheon of the bella Coola, for instance appears to be a special and probably temporary development while it has connection with ceremonies the body of the myths are unaffected by the series of deities they are ordinary american indian myths typical of the region this systematically worked out polytheism is in such contrast in every way with the eminently unsystematic but spontaneous body of religious belief and traditions of the bella Coola, that its superficial and uncharacteristic part in the mythology of the people can scarcely be doubted the array of gods of the ancient mexicans is also of little significance many gods with distinguishing characters are represented in mexican art and they enter into the astrological ritual or calendar for both these purposes and no doubt for many sides of a highly developed worship the numerous differentiated gods were a means but there is little and nothing consistent and connected about these same gods in the myths the deities of mexican polytheism have their real existence outside of mexican mythology there are different kinds of north american mythologies as there are different cultures but their variations all illustrate their common basis of a lack of philosophical tendency of conceptions of creation and of a creator god or of gods the mythology of the north pacific coast is characterized by a class of tales of adventures with monsters and supernatural beings many of which as has been pointed out are virtually identical with accounts of the acquisition of a guardian spirit it is further characterized by clan origin legends consisting of a narration concerning a fictitious individual not connected definitely with the present by any continuous genealogy there is also a large class of stories dealing with the adventures of the character known as the trickster and culture hero true creation myths are scarcely developed myths like the well-known one of the origin of light according to which the raven causes himself to be born as the grandson of the man who keeps the sun shut up and obtaining it breaks the envelope and flees with the sun do supply in some measure an explanation of the phenomena of the world but it is evident from the character of myths such as this one that the interest of the indians is centred more upon the pure story part of the myth the trickery and adventures of the raven hero than upon any attempt at a scientific explanation of daylight and the sun if the desire of such an explanation had been the main unconscious force shaping this myth this explanation of the origin of one of the most prominent facts of the world would not have been subordinated to an undignified story of a person without creative power the myths of the eskimo deal even less with the origin of the world there are some cosmological ideas but almost none that are cosmogonical animals occur to a very limited extent the majority of the myths are not as among the indians stories of heroes with remarkable supernatural powers of a kind transcending those of men of the present day 
but comparatively matter-of-fact experience of persons that are evidently conceived of as in no great degree different from ordinary men and while the supernatural of course enters largely into these tales it is of a kind that the eskimo believe to be practised daily about themselves the character of the eskimo myths where they are not affected by contact with the indians is very uniform and monotonous and they must be regarded as in a high degree specialized it is remarkable how foreign the idea of explaining origin is to eskimo thought among the tribes east of the watershed of the continent of whom those that are now best known are west of the great lakes and the mississippi the culture hero and trickster is usually important though at times as among the blackfeet and the arapaho he is more or less hesitatingly identified with the creator yet myths giving even a tolerably broad philosophy of the world scarcely occur those things in nature that are explained in the myths are detached and trivial ancestor myths like those of the pacific coast are not found in this region and the monster and dangerous spirit myths are possessed of a somewhat different nature among the indians of the north pacific coast these myths usually take the form of accounts of dangers which threaten the hero and from which he escapes or which he overcomes among the plains and other eastern tribes the idea of a monster destroying hero is more usual twin heroes are common in this character another favorite idea is the miraculous origin of the hero many typical tales such as the well-known one of blood clot boy consist of what is really a separate myth or myth incident serving to tell the hero's origin to which are added an indefinite series of his achievements the myths of the pueblos and other tribes of the southwest are again quite different the trickster and animal myths including most of a romantic personal humorous and obscene nature form a separate class that has but little connection with religion on the other hand the more sacred myths are combined with one long continuous story this begins with the origin of the world but from first to last is chiefly a mythical and ritualistic history of the tribe no doubt with the occasional inclusion of actual historical events the scientific side of this myth in spite of its systematization and dignity has all the incongruity and inadequacy of the philosophical attempts of other groups of indians the tribal and ceremonial elements eminently outweigh the cosmogonical tribal migration traditions that somewhat remind one of these southwestern myths are found among a number of the eastern tribes as among the delawares creek cherokee wichita and hidatsa appearing to develop most frequently where the population is sessile they are noteworthy because nothing of a similar nature seems ever to have developed on the pacific coast of north america as far south as southern california the indians of northwestern california have a culture hero who resembles the corresponding character of the northern and eastern indians of america he is both trickster and monster destroyer he appears to be a true culture hero from the fact that though he is responsible for certain things in the world he is not the creator for instance he obtains food by theft but does not create it the indians of this part of california differ somewhat among themselves in their treatment of this central figure of their mythology in one case the trickster and the monster ridding sides of his nature are separated and incorporated in two differentiated characters usually an important part of his career is his relation with his son the incidents of which resemble those told of kmukmach by the klamath lake indians among the tribes which do not possess the culture of northwestern california in its most special development these episodes are sometimes condensed into a myth which is told of another personage than the central figure of the mythology sometimes the culture hero resembles somewhat the chief mythological figure a creator of the indians of the rest of the state in spite of these considerable variations however the culture hero as he is known on the north pacific coast and in the east usually appears in some form among the indians of this region the indians of northwestern california have also a strongly developed conception that a previous race is responsible for everything that exists in the world from physical features of nature to human institutions 
no connected or complete account of the origination of these things is however given it would seem that the idea of this previous creative race is ever present in the minds of these indians but has not been carried out either consistently or thoroughly in their myths the belief in a previous world or existence of men-like beings or of fabulous races of the past is not uncommon the tornet of the eskimo for instance possesses some of the qualities of the ixaria of the karok the waks of the uruk the kixunai of the hoopa among the tribes of northwestern california there is however always the underlying idea of the connection between this race and the origin of the present condition of the world and this fundamental belief distinguishes their conception from the more widely spread similar conceptions it is believed that at the coming of mankind this earlier race either withdrew from men into the mountains and across the sea or turned into animals in connection with this mythological idea curtin's theory as to the fundamental nature of american creation myths will be recalled obvious traces of this supposed fundamental type of mythology are found everywhere but curtin's exposition of it applies with greater accuracy to the indians of california than to those elsewhere in america and in a higher degree to the tribes of northwestern california than to those of central california whose mythologies curtin has chosen for the illustration and corroboration of his views many of the northwestern myths that relate the origin of human institutions and especially of ceremonies consist of little else than a recital or description of the actions performed by living people in the course of practicing these institutions with the one all-important addition that it is stated that the agents in the myth are of the race of these pre-human beings this fact according to the way of thinking of the indians sufficiently explains the origin of anything and is a characteristic illustration of the mode of thought which with them takes the place of our method of conceiving of creation among these northwestern indians there is rarely any idea that this preceding race made or created an object or invented an institution a plant or medicine grew among them a ceremony was performed by one of them and therefore these things exist and are done by men the idea of origin consists of the association in time and space without any causal relation of the phenomenon explained and of the previous race the inconsistency that the ceremonies instituted by the preceding people could not have originated the ceremonies practised by human people because the former fled or were transformed before the coming of men does not trouble the indians in the greater part of california outside of the northwestern region considerably different mythological ideas prevail the idea of preceding distinct race analogous to humanity but by their mere existence originating phenomena is much less clearly developed the conception of a culture hero is also wanting instead of a human divinity there is almost everywhere a true creator a god who makes sometimes he is a person sometimes an animal this creator is usually not thought of as having been entirely alone even at the very beginning he and one or two companions are the first existing beings often he makes the world from primitive water generally he makes also mountains and rivers usually he creates food almost always he creates men and frequently he divides them by languages and localities he gives men their arts and occupations in some mythologies one of his companions the coyote acts in a spirit opposed to that of the deity and is the cause of the evil and imperfection in the world which exists contrary to the original plan of the creator among certain groups such as the maidu there is this contrast between the wise powerful benevolent creator and the foolish one the coyote among others such as the yuki and the castanoan indians the contrast between the two characters is somewhat changed the coyote is responsible for certain evils especially death but the greater difference between him and the creator is that the latter is the cause of the earth and of nature of man and his physical life 
to the coyote are due the perfecting of the world the theft of the sun and of fire from their possessors and the human activities the industries and practices of men the coyote thus takes on much the character of the culture hero and in this connection the tricky ridiculous obscene side of his nature finds full expression however much their power may be kindred or alike the character and the functions of the coyote and the creator invariably differ fundamentally in the myths of the indians of this culture area the creator names are indicative of his nature with the yuki he is going alone with the winton existing in the above with the maidu earth initiate or earth maker where he appears in animal form it is often as the eagle the typical californian myths are often puerile and of a prosaic and realistic character that causes them to lack much of the picturesqueness of other mythologies but however rude they furnish a more consistent and complete explanation of the origin of the world and everything in it than can be found in any other region of america the difference existing in this respect between the californians and other indians is illustrated by the fact that although certain of the plains tribes have lengthy creation myths these myths which are eminently ceremonial and little more in many cases than a combination of unrelated myths that are independently current among the tribe are so little known that the majority of individuals are acquainted only with the fragments whereas they may possess a tolerable acquaintance with the more characteristic myths of the tribe in the greater part of california creation myths are not only known to every one but are generally better known than other myths they form the centre and basis of the mythology and whereas in other regions on the breaking up of the native ideas on contact with the whites creation myths are the first to be affected and altered and disorganized and forgotten wherever in california only fragments of the old beliefs survive these fragments are first of all creation myths myths other than those referring directly to the origin of the world on the whole lack specific characteristics in california there are many that are similar to myths elsewhere on the continent but as a class it is difficult to say anything about them it is the creation myths that are typical of the region it would seem that the exceptional tendency of the california indian to form real creation myths is not the result of a higher intellectuality which seeks and finds explanations and to which other indians have not attained the tendency is probably due rather to a lack on the part of the californian of the mythological specialization which characterizes other american indians his creative mythology is less specifically american and of a nature pertaining more to all races in general this quality stamps the typical native mythology of california which is nearest to our own conception of any in america as being generalized and rudimentary rather than highly developed a third ethnographical province in the state may be distinguished along the coast of santa barbara ventura and perhaps los angeles counties and on the santa barbara islands most of the tribes of this area are completely extinct and where there are a few survivors they are civilized to form an estimate of these people we must therefore depend on the accounts of early voyagers and missionaries and the necessarily incomplete evidence of archaeology the latter is however unusually full this region having long been known as the richest to the archaeologist in the state in consequence it is possible to form a fair conception of the life of these people although it is probable that we shall remain in comparative ignorance of their thought and religion the houses of the indians of the southwestern island and coast region are described as having been round and covered with vegetation or thatching resembling those prevalent through central california working in wood was practiced wooden dishes were made and canoes were constructed from planks pieced together inasmuch as the tule raft was the only form of boat used along the thousand miles of coast from cape san lucas to cape mendocino except in this confined locality the occurrence here of well-made canoes is sufficient to mark off these tribes the same is to be said of the inlaid work 
of the stone bowls and of the realistic carvings of extasians that have occasionally been found and to which nothing comparable is known from the entire central californian area altogether the indians of this region seem to have occupied a higher plane in the development of their arts in this respect they resemble the tribes of the northwestern region a similar parallelism is evident in the means of subsistence for the island inhabitants and even those of the mainland seem to have depended more upon fish and seafoods than upon the vegetable products of the land it may also be mentioned that like the northwestern indians they buried the dead as is well known the country south of the tehachapi range in the interior and a point conception on the coast is different in climate in flora and fauna and in modern sociological conditions from the considerably larger part of the state to the north of this range ethnologically the same difference is maintained whereas northern and central california is inhabited by a multiplicity of small stocks of people that are confined to california and from whom only small portions of their territory seem to have been wrested by supposedly intrusive atabascans and shoshoneans the territory south of tehachapi is occupied by tribes belonging to only two linguistic stocks both of them geographically extensive the shoshonean and the yuman this fourth culture area seems less uniform and less defined territorially than the others in the state to the east it shades off into the culture of arizona and new mexico while on the west it is difficult to separate it sharply from the culture of the chumash of santa barbara there is considerable difference in natural environment between the tribes of the colorado river of the interior desert and of the more favored coast region and there seem to be some corresponding cultural differences the tribes on the colorado practice agriculture and possess an approach to a totemic gentile system two features unparalleled in the rest of california the colorado tribes and at least the more southern of those on the coast also make pottery none of them do any other than the simplest work in wood all the tribes burn the dead and all have extensive mourning ceremonies among the coast tribes puberty initiation ceremonies are next in prominence after the mourning ceremonies the colorado tribes lack these but have a number of curious simple singing ceremonies none of the groups show much similarity with the pueblo and other southwestern tribes in their ceremonials in certain features of material culture such as the use of pottery the wooden-headed war club and the curved throwing stick there is similarity with the southwest on the whole the groups of the coast region such as the missionized diaguenos luisenos and gabrielenos stand much closer to the typical californians than do those of the colorado river the mythology of the shoshoneans and yumans on the coast and of the yuman mojaves on the colorado show a considerable kinship in spirit and many identities of detail the creation myths usually agree in ascribing the origin of all living things to heaven and earth together with men or from among them is born a hero who differs in dignity and character from the usual culture hero and has some of the characteristics of a divinity and creator in all the mythologies he dies the most prevalent idea being that his death occurs in consequence of some action of the frog at his cremation the coyote plays a part this first hero is usually succeeded by a second who may be his younger brother or an appearance of later generations this second character originates more particularly the human institutions and on withdrawing from the people leaves them and the world in their present condition among the mojave another myth is what may be called a tribal migration tradition which is very exactly localized and has much the appearance of historical truth though it is probably almost entirely mythical it would seem that the tribes near the coast had traces of something similar from what has been said it would appear that about four types of native culture can be distinguished in the limits of the present state of california 
the tribes of the northwesternmost part of the state are considerably specialized and the same seems to have been the case with the inhabitants of the santa barbara islands and the vicinity in southern california also the indians are different in many ways from those in other parts of the state in the great central and northern portion of the state both in the interior and on the coast there seem to prevail only one type of culture locally diversified but presenting fundamentally the same features everywhere little is known about the shoshoneans and the washoe living in the narrow strip of the state east of the sierra nevada it seems likely that they differ from the more typical californians of the central region their territory however physiographically forms part of the great basin and not of the pacific coast and even politically constitutes only a fringe along an artificial boundary of the state so that they may be disregarded in the present connection as is the case everywhere there are no absolute breaks and few sharp ones between the several cultures that have been mentioned so that the areas occupied by each cannot be very definitely circumscribed as regards single characteristics there are many complete transitions and even identities between two or more cultures but the general type of life and native activity in each of the several areas in spite of such resemblances is quite distinct the numerous linguistic families of california though they must apparently still continue to be considered as generally unrelated fall into three groups each confined to a certain territory and containing languages of the same type of structure in the northwest the languages are rough and complex in the southwest they are also complex while over the greater part of the state they are phonetically smooth and morphologically simple case inflections taking the place of incorporation these three linguistic areas correspond approximately to the culture areas north of tehachapi the agreement is not exact for the saladin family of the salinas valley linguistically shows the southwestern type in more pronounced form than the chumash of santa barbara while culturally the saladin indians seem to have formed part not of the southwestern santa barbara area but of the central one nevertheless it is quite clear that in a general way the indians of two rather restricted areas in northwestern and southwestern california can be affirmed to have been distinct from those of the main body of the state in the character both of their languages and of their culture presenting in both respects a greater degree of complexity and development than the majority of the indians of the state there is no reason to suppose any causal connection between these developments in the southwest and northwest ethnologically california may be said to be characterized by the absence of agriculture and of pottery by the total absence of totemism or gentile organization by an unusually simple and loose social organization in which wealth plays for a somewhat primitive and an american group a rather important part by the very rude development of all arts except basketry by the lack in art of realism by a slight development of fetishism and by the conspicuous lack of the symbolism and ritualism so highly developed by most of the american indians by the marked prevalence of religious restrictions connected with birth death sexual matters and similar phases of life by the predominance among ceremonials of mourning and initiation rites and by a considerable development of true conceptions of creation in mythology these characteristics hold true in some degree almost throughout the entire state but in nearly every case they are most marked in the large central region the inhabitants of which may be justly regarded as the most typical of californians hand in hand with these ethnological characteristics go the temperamental ones of an unwarlike nature and of a lack of the intensity and pride which are such strongly marked qualities of the american indians as a whole it will therefore be seen that in almost every instance the californian indians are from an american point of view negatively specialized in the direction of lacking typical american qualities but that from the more general human standpoint they are for the same reason generalized they are among the least characteristic of the indians of north america End of part two
part three of california history two pieces by various this librivox recording is in the public domain part three alaska yukon pacific exposition governor's representatives for california report nineteen ten sacramento california december twenty seventh nineteen ten to hon james n gillette governor of california and ex officio commissioner alaska yukon pacific exposition dear sir as your representatives charged with the details of california's representation at the alaska yukon pacific exposition held at seattle washington from june first to october fifteenth nineteen o nine inclusive we take pleasure in submitting to you the following report of our work it was right that california should aid and participate in a western exposition and it was wise to make the appropriation for the purpose sufficient to ensure a creditable representation of the state's resources accordingly on your recommendation the legislature of nineteen o seven set apart from the general fund the sum of a hundred thousand dollars and authorized you as commissioner for california through such representatives as it might be your pleasure to appoint to supervise the general expenditure of the appropriation in the erection of a suitable building on the alaska yukon pacific exposition grounds and the collection and installation therein of such an exhibit as would do credit to the state and exemplify in as striking and effective manner as possible the great variety and superior quality of california products representatives in accordance with the authority thus conferred it was your pleasure to appoint the undersigned to represent you in this work you acted promptly and gave your representatives ample time to take advantage of the seasons to secure samples of everything necessary for a complete display of the state's resources to this one fact is due largely the greater completeness of the seattle exhibit than any california had previously made you also relieved your representatives of possible embarrassment by allowing them to appoint their own assistance and fix their compensation and term of service in the exercise of this authority preference was given to those best qualified to perform the work required and the term of employment depended on efficiency and good behavior no help was hired that was not absolutely necessary and no one was kept on the payroll a moment longer than his or her services were required in short it was our determined purpose from the start to try and secure maximum results at a minimum cost in every department of the work to the end that the final outcome might be an improvement on any previous effort made by california of a similar character we considered this to be necessary not only in deference to our own reputation but more particularly for the credit and benefit of the state you can understand if the display made at seattle had been less complete or in any way less attractive than the one made at portland for instance the impression created would be that those in charge were becoming careless or that california was retrograding a condition that would probably have resulted in as much harm as good and largely or entirely neutralized the object of the legislature in making the appropriation improvement imperative we felt that we must improve on previous showings made by the state at other expositions or resign and ask that the responsibility be placed in other hands or that the money be allowed to remain in the state treasury with a larger appropriation corresponding with the larger expenditures in freight and numerous other items at seattle as compared to portland the effort for an improved display would not have been difficult but with the appropriation practically the same considering the salvage benefit realized for portland from california's exhibit the previous year at st louis the planning the economizing the denials and the extra personal labor imposed in order to accomplish the desired result can never be fully appreciated except by those who had immediate charge of the work those efforts were made the more difficult by reason of california's reputation for open-handed hospitality and the ever-present consciousness that nothing must be done or left undone that might tend to impair that reputation 
you can understand it is no easy task to maintain a show of generous hospitality all day and then set up at night to figure out how you can do the same thing to-morrow without unduly impairing a limited revenue building and exhibits superior but we did it we built the best and second largest state building ever erected at a world's fair we collected and installed the most complete and most attractive exhibit of california's resources that the state ever made we maintained stereopticon lectures gave out verbal information to all inquirers and distributed attractive literature we gave frequent receptions and dispensed true california hospitality we filled the measure of our aim we did what we believed the state expected us to do and it is a proud moment now the work is ended and we are able to record the fact that we did it without exceeding the appropriation the california building the california building was of the spanish renaissance style of architecture the broad steps that led up to the five large arches which opened on to the wide portico or colonnade were eighty feet long and through any of the five broad doors that fronted the arches visitors entered the main exhibition hall this hall was one hundred and forty feet square with gallery on all four sides twenty-one feet high and thirty feet wide four flights of easy stairs one at either corner led to the spacious gallery light was diffused from side windows under the gallery and in the gallery high enough from the floor so as not to interfere with the wall for exhibit purposes and from an iron framed skylight sixty four feet square on either side of the main building and in line with the front there were wings thirty two feet wide and thirty five feet long this gave a total frontage to the building of two hundred and ten feet or a little more than two-thirds of an average city block the wings were so arranged as to provide a lecture hall offices parlor reception room buffet and living rooms for the representatives and some of the employees the structure as a whole presented an imposing appearance and was ideal for the purpose intended it was designed and built by the state engineering department with an occasional inspection by one of the representatives builders figured on the plans and variously estimated the cost at from fifty thousand to fifty six thousand dollars we had asked for a building to cost not exceeding one-third of the appropriation for a time we feared the dimensions would have to be reduced but state engineer ellery after figuring carefully on the job expressed the opinion that he could erect the structure as planned for an amount pretty close to our figures he was finally requested to go ahead with the work he put one of his trusted superintendents in charge hired his help by the day and when completed as nearly as desired for exhibition purposes it was found to have cost including preparation of grounds and finishing of lecture room just forty thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars and eighty four cents and it was better finished outside and more substantially constructed than exposition buildings usually are now a museum as you are aware it has been deeded to the washington university on whose grounds the exposition was held and barring accidents will remain for many years as the university museum building the general display the installation would be tedious to describe and we will not attempt it further than to say that harmony in color and arrangement was maintained throughout the building all balancing from an imposing centerpiece or product palace which was covered entirely with natural products of the state including dried fruits seeds cereals raisins nuts etc so artistically arranged as to give the whole a very attractive appearance this centerpiece or palace was admitted to be not only the most beautiful feature of the california building but the most original elaborate and artistic feature of the entire exposition the editor of illustrated northwest farm and home visited the california building during the early part of the fair and returning home gave expression to his impressions through the columns of his paper in these words quote, in the california building there is everything to delight the eye and entertainers can talk english the statuary and ornaments in fruits and nuts surpasses anything that the eye of man ever beheld 
for instance the representation of carvings over the finished woods are created of various kinds of fruits at the entrance to the centerpiece within the main building are two life-size mountain lions made of peaches a black knight mounted on a black horse are made of california prunes an elephant full size is made of california walnuts a life-size cow is created of california almonds a large black bear has california raisins for a robe a lemon as large as a hogshead is composed of california lemons End quote. these were some of the fruit features designed to set off the general display and emphasize the products that composed them but these were only incidental to the strong and imposing exhibit of all of california's material products there was a generous display of processed fruits including all varieties known to the state the dried fruit department was strong and attractive embracing three separate features one of miscellaneous dried fruits one of raisins and one of prunes there were separate stands or features of wines olive oil pickled olives mineral water canned fruit preserved fruit vegetables flowers oranges nuts honey beans cereals seeds sugar silk wool ostrich feathers fibres canned milk canned fish etc etc besides many suitable showcases containing samples of other products more delicate and less in quantity there was a strong show of incubators and an attractive feature of borax models were shown and in operation where practicable of such articles or machinery as could not be accommodated otherwise as for instance the working model of a complete gold dredge manufactured especially for this exhibit by the risden ironworks of san francisco mining exhibit the mining department of the display on the main floor of the california building was attractively installed and as complete as the state has ever made being strong in the minerals in which we are strong but embracing in all forty-four separate commercial varieties including a strong showing of mineral oils and structural materials a beautiful illuminated case of gold specimens and free gold ores from siskiyou county and an equally beautiful illuminated case of rough and cut gems from san diego county including gem jewelry constituted very attractive features of the mineral department the onyx and onyx ware from san diego made a fine showing as did also the large display of slate in all forms of utility from el dorado forestry the forestry department included all the commercial woods of the state and many that have a prospective value for cabinet purposes the variety displayed in this feature was so great the installation so attractive and the quality of the raw and manufactured samples so superior that the jury readily awarded to it a grand prize the highest recognition possible and this in a state where forestry is a leading industry and by a jury composed largely of washingtonians this was a victory to be proud of all the available space on the walls of the main exhibition hall was covered with enlarged views of california scenes and industries the gallery on the upper floor one gallery the front was reserved for display pictures a hotel information bureau and receptions one for an exhibit of manufacturer samples one for art and one for education the manufacturer samples while largely a new departure constituted a very interesting and instructive feature even many californians were surprised to learn that all of the articles found there were made in this state leather and leather goods silk and silk fabrics and nautical instruments in this department each were awarded the highest prize it was possible to obtain fine arts the art display collected largely by miss evelyn almond witherow of san francisco is a labor of love her services being gratuitous as was her time in superintending the installation of the exhibit later was freely admitted by those informed on such things to be the best and most complete representation of california art and handicraft ever brought together on any previous occasion either at home or abroad it comprised nearly three hundred pictures all the best work of the best artists in the state besides busts of statuary samples of modeling and eight large and specially designed showcases 
filled with beautiful samples of all classes of handiwork known to art education our educational display was the best and most complete ever made and was very much the best exhibit of the kind at the seattle exposition it was collected and superintended by mr robert furlong of san rafael an expert in this line of work and embraced a representative showing of every department of california's educational system from the kindergarten to the university not omitting the libraries and private educational institutions there could be only one criticism to this department and that was its crowded condition as there was too much material for the space that could be allowed for it in an exhibit of products quantity can be reduced without material detriment but if one sample of an educational exhibit is left out the work perhaps of some fond son or daughter whose parents may come looking for it there is likely to be trouble nearly all portions of california contributed to this department making the display representative in every sense our location and grounds the california building though some distance back from the main entrance was on high ground and eligibly located as to attractive surroundings and accessibility the grounds for so large a structure were necessarily extensive and the work of clearing leveling sodding and planting these grounds involved an expenditure much greater than at previous expositions where the grounds were smaller and required less preparatory work mr george c redding of fresno our superintendent of horticulture giving his talents and time as did miss withrow for the love of the work and the good he could do the state collected from different nurseries in california two carloads of fruiting trees flowering plants palms and shrubs and traveled to seattle to personally superintend the work of converting these grounds into a typical california park with clusters of palms geranium beds and orange groves it gave to the exposition a semi-tropic feature which visitors greatly enjoyed and which was highly appreciated by the exposition management as a rare and valuable acquisition to their already beautiful landscape effects it might be said however that the citrus trees and other tender plants did not thrive well even in the seattle summer and though the grounds thus planted as a side attraction and subject of favorable comment were perhaps worth all they cost yet they were not so beautiful as they would have been under more favorable climatic conditions mr redding's work in the department was prompted by love of his art and pride in his state he contributed liberally from his own nurseries and gave time and technical assistance that money could hardly have bought and for his unstinted services not only your representatives but all californians owe him a debt of lasting gratitude county aid striving to obtain the best exhibit possible with the means available your representatives early solicited the cooperation of all the counties of california offering in return for their efforts such distinctive representation as the merits of their respective products would warrant consistent with a general harmonious plan of installation some responded very generously others modestly and some not at all on the whole however the help from counties was very material particularly the services of their respective representatives in entertaining visitors to the california building and answering the constant flow of questions provoked by an inspection of the exhibits those counties that supported one or more representatives at the exposition and which contributed more or less to the general display were san diego los angeles riverside ventura santa barbara santa cruz alameda san francisco tulare sacramento and siskiyou material was contributed by kern fresno san joaquin monterey santa clara and here and there a little from others but none of these latter maintained a representative while some of those first named had at least two people with us all the time it can be readily understood that with the regular state employees reinforced by all the county representatives indicated selected generally by reason of their especial qualifications for the position the california force was very strong and if any one visited the building and left without learning all he or she wanted to know about our state or any part or industry thereof it was because they did not make the desire for such information known 
the work of the able floor representatives and lecturers was strongly reinforced by a well-equipped literature bureau a neat booth with spacious counter was provided at a prominent and convenient place in the building and well supplied with attractive literature all the time free to all comers in addition to the state book a large edition of which was compiled and published at the expense of the appropriation and which we desire to say here was as comprehensive a publication on california as was ever gotten out nearly every progressive county contributed to the supply thus making it possible to meet the eager demand that always exists for information regarding this state altogether from first to last we estimate that more than a carload of literature was handed out from our literature booth or given to visitors by those on the floor and yet no one was ever asked to take a line who had not previously expressed a desire for it if you force literature on people much of it is thrown away as soon as they are out of your sight if put within convenient reach people take what they want and no more and what they want they keep no california literature was thrown away the free illustrated lectures were a strong reinforcement to the literature these lectures were given by the different county representatives in a hall built and equipped by the state especially for the purpose and which opened off the main exhibition room the number of lectures varied from nine to twelve a day each occupying half an hour twenty-five minutes for the talk and five minutes to empty and refill the hall they were a popular feature and always well patronized and their far-reaching and convincing lessons will be realized in benefits to california and especially to the sections represented for many years to come a new departure in exposition work was the maintenance in the california building of a california hotel information bureau room and accommodations were gladly given for this feature which however was maintained at the expense of certain contributing hotels that represented practically all important centres of the state it relieved your representatives of the duty of supplying information in this particular line of inquiry and ensured the work being done better than it could have been done otherwise demonstrating booths were maintained in the california building by a number of exhibitors to whom we were pleased to give space for the purpose as experience teaches that one of the most effective ways of impressing the merits of any particular article is to prove its value by sample our preserved fruits our canned mackerel and our borax products were shown and sampled from artistic booths while beans wine olive oil and other products were demonstrated as occasion required but in a more modest way hostesses mrs wiggins and mrs filcher who had served so successfully as hostesses at the st louis exhibition and at the portland exposition were installed as hostesses of the california building at seattle the compensation to be determined after the close of the exposition when our financial condition would be better understood they agreeing in advance to abide by the outcome this arrangement was an incentive to extra economy on their part and it may be said they seconded every effort of your representatives in that direction and yet they maintained california's reputation for hospitality admirably and became favorites at the large hostesses association of the exposition of which mrs wiggins was one of the leading officials secretary mr george a dennison who had a long prior record with the state board of trade and who served us so efficiently as secretary at st louis and at portland was appointed secretary at seattle and remained with us to the close of our work in this connection it may be said that other state representatives had as their office force a secretary a bookkeeper and a stenographer mr dennison possessing the qualifications filled all three of those positions for california and being an expert in each branch filled them with marked efficiency attendance the splendid exhibit made by california proved one of the principal attractions of the exposition it became to be the general remark that if you did not see the government exhibit and the california exhibit you did not see the show 
as a consequence all who attended the exposition visited the california building and as may be supposed we had a crowd passing through the exhibits all the time the building was open the average attendance at the exposition was close to twenty five thousand a day allowing that each visitor spent two days on the grounds and that in one of the two days practically all visited our building it may be estimated that the number who inspected the california exhibits daily was about twelve thousand this we believe is a fair estimate california visitors we had a separate card register for visitors from this state and it will surprise you perhaps to learn that the number of californians who registered with us averaged nearly two hundred a day or twelve hundred a week in one day during the height of the season we registered three hundred and seventy two people from our home state it is not only possible but very probable that many come and went without registering making allowance for these and figuring those we did register at twelve hundred a week and counting twenty weeks for the fair nineteen weeks and five days to be exact we estimate the number of californians who attended the seattle exposition at twenty five thousand awards if other evidence were wanting to establish the claim that the seattle exhibit was the best and most complete ever made by california it would be found in the record of prizes won by the state in proportion to the number of entries we not only beat all the other states in the number of high awards but we beat all past records made by california and this in face of the fact that the juries as a rule set a high standard and were very critical in their examinations california's greatest total premiums at any previous exposition was five hundred and eighteen while at seattle the total was eight hundred to win gold medals or higher on half the entries is considered a remarkable record and yet out of the total of eight hundred at seattle ninety were grand prizes an award only made in case of extraordinary excellence four hundred and fourteen were gold medals a hundred and fifty five silver medals a hundred and eight bronze medals and thirty three honourable mentions a careful analysis by one who understands what is required to win a high award at an international exposition and what it stands for will show at once that this is a most extraordinary record one which we confidently believe has never been equalled by any state or country at any exposition in the world and one which is not likely to be equalled except possibly by california herself for many years to come it will be noticed from the detailed list of the awards which follows in this report that they are well distributed throughout the state nearly every locality and every industry sharing in the honors a further evidence of the representative character of the exhibit salvage at the close of the exposition we took sufficient time to safely pack all materials that had to be returned and to label it carefully so as to facilitate its distribution in california in the meantime we sold some of the edible goods and some on order we turned over to local agents of the owners all money received therefore has been remitted to the parties who furnished the articles and receipts received for the same the furniture fixtures and other material which belonged to the state and which we deemed it advisable to sell was disposed of to the best advantage possible considering the great quantity of this class of goods that were being thrown on the market from this source we realized the sum of five thousand one hundred and thirty five dollars and sixteen cents from rent of soft drink stand in the building we realized the sum of three hundred dollars and from the sale of building seven hundred and fifty dollars making the total salvage exclusive of building five thousand four hundred and thirty five dollars and sixteen cents which is fully accounted for in the financial statement which follows in this report the seven hundred and fifty dollars received for the building was turned over to the state printer on account and never passed through our hands material on hand there was certain office furniture which it was deemed unwise to sacrifice and some permanent exhibition material that is worth more to the state for future expositions than any amount that could be realized from it at a forced sale 
consequently this material was returned and the furniture has been turned over to the state agricultural society and the exhibition material has been stored in a shed which we built for the purpose on the grounds of the state agricultural society the latter consists of eight mineral showcases a collection of california ores and mineral specimens a large assortment of california woods including burls and rare specimens a lot of framed and unframed pictures of california scenes and industries and about five hundred glass jars most of which are filled with seeds cereals sugar or processed fruits the furniture returned at fifty cents on the dollar the usual selling price at an exposition of good material is worth seventy five dollars the showcases four hundred and twenty five dollars exhibit material estimated at half what it would cost to collect it two thousand dollars and the glass jars one thousand dollars this totals a heritage to the state from the seattle exposition of three thousand five hundred dollars this will be available and worth even more than the sum stated whenever the state desires to make another exhibition benefits to california summing up the benefits of an exhibit is a good deal like a merchant trying to estimate the good derived from a sign over his door occasionally a patron may say oh, i saw your sign and came in and occasionally a party may say i saw your exhibit and it prompted me to come to california the money dropped from travelers alone who passed through this state going to or returning from the exposition has probably recompensed california for its outlay but this is only the beginning of the harvest many people from the eastern and central states who visited the exposition with a view of ascertaining in which part of the northwest it would be best to settle changed their minds after seeing the exhibits made by the different states and came on to california besides thousands of others already settled after inspecting the exhibits made by this state openly declared that if they ever moved again they would land in california the tons of literature on this state carried away by visitors to supplement and strengthen their impressions both impressions and literature to be disseminated among their neighbors will have an effect that cannot be estimated but which must inevitably bear fruit for california for many years to come then again the seeing of our splendid products naturally excites a desire to try them and the increased demand for our fruits oil wines etc growing out of such a display is far-reaching but more than all this the greater intercourse the better acquaintance the more friendly feeling between the people of the different sections of the country and particularly of the west and more particularly between the people of this state and washington or oregon and washington if you please is bound to lead to a better understanding in regard to trade relations and result in commercial benefits that cannot be estimated that the participation of california was wise there is no doubt and that the benefits received and to be received will be many-fold greater than the cost is as certain as the future the follow-up letters that have already come to your representatives from people of the northwest and other sections who saw and inspected our exhibit is further proof that an interest in this state has been awakened among them that will not soon die out acknowledgments we are under obligations to so many that it would be tedious to enumerate them the higher officials of the exposition president j e chilberg director-general i a nadeau and director of exhibits h e dosh showed us every courtesy and manifested a desire to do all they could to facilitate our work while from the other departments and even from the subordinates in all departments a request from california was promptly considered and always conceded when not inconsistent with the exposition rules there were differences at first as is always the case but on a better understanding these were adjusted to the satisfaction of all concerned the southern pacific company and the northern pacific company carried our freight at a one-way rate and their respective agents were prompt and accommodating setting a new mark for railroad efficiency at expositions the southern pacific passenger department also loaned us some very fine pictures of california scenes which were valuable not only as wall decorations but as object lessons on certain features of our state to the golden gate park officials of san francisco 
and also the officials of the stockton state hospital we are under obligation for liberal contributions of ornamental plants and shrubs for the decoration of the california building and grounds mr r m teague of san dimas and the fancher creek nursery of fresno also contributed liberally of their choicest stock for which we owe them a debt of gratitude the same is true of j dietrich howard and smith elysian park and edward h rust all of los angeles and of the orange county nursery and land company of fullerton to the counties and other subdivisions of the state that through organized effort and at their own expense collected valuable exhibition material prepared descriptive literature and sent representatives to seattle thereby strengthening the exhibit and adding to the force of california workers we are under obligations to their efforts and to the efficiency of the people they sent much of california's success at the seattle exposition is due and we want them to know and feel that their efforts and cooperation were fully appreciated to producers manufacturers and packers to lumbermen and miners who responded to our request for samples of their output we owe a debt which we tried to pay in part by caring for their goods as they would have cared for them and by looking out for their interests in the matter of awards as carefully as they could have done had they been there in this connection we wish to express our obligation to the niles pease furniture company for the generous loan of the finest art mission furniture for our reception room to byron mousey of san francisco the star piano company and sailor baumeister of los angeles for the loan of pianos for the use of our guests and to the eilers piano company for the free use of a pianola for our lecture room to arthur harris designer and to c l wilson superintendent of installation both experts in their line is due largely the attractive character of california's exhibit admitted to be the most beautiful in arrangement and display as well as the most comprehensive ever put up by this or any other state at seattle or any other exposition conclusion we do not hesitate to affirm that california's participation at the seattle exposition was a success from every point of view and knowing our trust was conscientiously performed and that our best efforts were exerted in the interest of our state we dare to hope that you who trusted us are not disappointed and that the people of california who generously advance the money for the work are satisfied with the showing made and that they will reap substantial and lasting benefit as the result of their enterprise and liberality we want to thank you sincerely for the confidence reposed in us for your kindly cooperation and advice and particularly for the generous rein given to us in carrying out a work for which you in the eyes of the law were primarily responsible our studied efforts were continually directed toward trying to get the greatest result at the least cost for though handling a generous appropriation we never lost sight of the fact that it was the people's money and consequently we consented to the expenditure of a dollar only where in our judgment a dollar's worth or more of benefit would accrue to california neither did we lose sight of the high standard which has characterized your course in the handling of public affairs we acted on the principle that public office is a public trust and that public money should be handled with greater care than one would handle his own the following pages contain a complete list of the awards made to california exhibitors and a statement of all monies received and expended and accompanying this report we hand you the vouchers showing all our transactions and just how the money was expended we have settled every honorable claim we have concluded the work in full even to the distribution of the awards and if there is a dollar left to go back into the treasury it is because that dollar was not needed for the full satisfaction of the duties imposed respectfully j a filcher frank wiggins governor's representatives end of part three end of california history two pieces by various